I'm doing a Bertrand oligopoly problem or a duopoly problem because there's only two players in this industry and the demand curves for those two players are given by um, from A's demand curve is here, from B's demand curve is here and since it's a Bertrand oligopoly they make their price decisions simultaneously and at the same time they reveal their prices to each other and the marginal cost of production here is five for both firms so how do we start this? Well, um, we're going to have to solve from A's problem and from B's problem separately since it's a simultaneous moves games and solve for their best response functions and then plug those into each other. That's our strategy going forward. So let's set up our from A's maximization problem. And Bertrand oligopoly means um, we're choosing the price. That's our choice variable. So let's start with the price of from A as the choice var variable for from A's maximization problem. And as with all maximization problems, um, we're going to have price times quantity of from A as our total revenue minus marginal cost times the quantity of from A as our total cost. So revenue minus cost is our profit. Our next step is to rewrite this plugging in for the quantity of from A, plugging in A's demand function. That's what we're going to do next. So we just rewrite the problem once again, except plugging in A's demand function. And we notice that um, there's a negative sign before it the price of from A and a positive sign before the price of from B. So if A right raises their own price, their quantity sold will go down. If the other firm, their competitor, raises their price, then the quantity sold at from A will go up. And so we've plugged in price times quantity minus marginal cost times quantity. We plug in the same demand function once again. All right, so that's a pretty long function, so let's just simplify that. And I'm sure you'll believe me when I say that this big thing simplifies down to 110 PA minus 2 PA squared plus 3 PB PA. Um, minus 500 minus 15 PB. So we have our finalized profit maximization problem for firm A, and now we're ready to take our first order condition, taking the partial derivative of that function with respect to the price of firm A, our choice variable, and we get 110 minus 4 PA plus 3 PB equals zero is our first order condition there. And we can simplify that first order condition solving for PA, since this is from A's problem. And when you simplify that, you get the best response function, PA equals 27.5 plus 3 quarters PB. All right, so that's one best response function. That's A's best response to B. So let's keep track of that. That's a, one of our two best response functions. And now let's erase this and go back and do firm B's maximization problem. And we do it using the exact same process as for firm A. We're doing these separately. We're not plugging anything in like we do in a price leadership situation. We're solving them separately. So firm B's maximization problem well, PB will be our choice variable, and our profit will be price of firm B times quantity of firm B minus marginal cost times quantity for firm B. And our next step is once again to plug in the quantity from firm B's demand function. So price times quantity as taken from firm B's demand function. And so price times quantity is what we have so far, minus marginal cost times quantity, which we again take from from these demand function. All right, so that long thing is our profit maximization problem, and we can simplify that down. And when we simplify it, we get um, maximize 130 PB 
minus 2pb squared plus 2pb pa. Um, minus 10 PA minus 600. That's just using algebra to simplify this thing. So we've set up for Fermi's maximization problem and now we're ready to take the first order conditions by taking the partial derivative with respect to the price of Fermi B. And that's going to give us 130 minus 4 PB plus 2 PA equals zero. And we can simplify that um, by solving for PB. This is from B's maximization problem, so we care about from B's best response. And solving for PB gives us from B's best response function, which is PB equals 32.5 plus one half PA. So here's our second best response function from B's best response to A. And now our final step to solve for the prices of from A and from B are going to be to plug these into one another. Um, we have two equations and two unknowns, and you can always solve a system of two equations and two unknowns um, to find out the value of those equations. So let's just do that. And this fits in with Nash equilibrium because Nash equilibrium is where each firm's um, choice is a best response given the other firm's choice. So by plugging these into one another, we're going to get prices for both firms that are best responses to each other. So let's just use PB. We could, it doesn't matter which one we use. Um, we're going to plug one into the other. I'm just going to take PB's best response function. PB equals 32.5 plus one half PA, except we're going to plug PA's best response function in there. So we're just plugging this in. So 0 0.5 times 27.5 plus 0 0.75 PB. And now this is one equation with one unknown, which is PB. And we can just solve that equation using algebra to find PB. And when you do solve that for algebra, you will find that PB equals 74, 74 even. So there's our price for firm B. Now we need to find the price for firm A, and that's pretty easy because we have A's best response function to B. So we can just plug this 74 in A's best response function. And when we do that, well, I guess I'll write out the algebra. So PA equals 27. 0.5 plus 0 0.75 times PB, which we've already found is 74. So the price of firm A is going to be equal to 83 when you plug that into a calculator. So this is the price of firm A, we have the price of firm B. Now all we need is the quantities for the two firms, which we get by plugging these prices into the firm's demand functions. So we take quantity of firm A is equal to 100 minus 2 PA, which is 83, we just solved for that, plus 3 PB, which is 74. And when we plug those in, we get the quantity that from A will produce is 156. Yes, that's the right, that's the right quantity. So we now have Three of our four things we need, we've got the price of both firms and the quantity of firm A. Our last thing is the quantity of firm B, which comes from plugging those prices into firm B's maximization problem. 2 times PB, and PB is 74, plus 2 times PA, and PA is 83, we've found. And when we plug that in, we find that the quantity firm B will produce will be 138. So now we've fully solved our maximization problem. We found the price for both firms and the quantity for both firms.